Hello and welcome to the 83rd Annual Joustice World Championships. I am your host, Daryl, and today I'm joined by an illustrious panel of judges. To my right, Kevin, how are you, man? Man, what's good? I am doing pretty well. I have, not kombucha this time, but I have my citron honey ginger tea, one of my favorite things of all time. How are you doing, Daryl? Well, that is an odd thing to bring to a sporting event, but I, I'm sure that you are as hyped as I am. Uh, Sergio, yeah. what are you looking for in the field today? Are there any particular con- competitors that uh, you think are going to stand out today? Um, you know, not really sure. It depends who, who tackles the, the jewels the best. Um, I'm pretty good at that, um, if you ask me, but, you know, I try to stay humble. So, yeah, it's been an expensive day, though. How, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing okay and i have a, a theory on why it's been an expensive day but uh we'll get to that after this little bit of the bit and our celebrity guest host judge a former retired joustice player shy how are you man i'm doing all right i actually drove to this event in a new car i was shoveling too much money at the old car and it started to feel like a plague had a showdown with the dealer i got a new car fit for a king and the old one's a specter of the past. So it's been a big day here at our our house. Oh. <laughs> that is excellent Very to hear. <laughs> that, that was awesome. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, uh, man, we are off to a good start so far. Uh, this is, of course, the Nintendo Jump Podcast, episode 83. It is, God, what is it? Uh, it is January 30th, and <laughs> we're about to talk about some Shovel Knight. So I am super excited. <sighs> mm. But... Before all that, I do have an announcement, uh, a little announcement. So we're about to talk about Shovel Knight be as our game of the month for January. This is finally our review episode. We've been playing it all month, and now we're ready to talk about it. So I am, I'm very excited. However, uh, breaking news as of today, our game of the month was decided for February. Uh, so we had a fairly long, grueling uh, voting process within our Discord. If you want to be involved uh, in future decisions, you know, join our Discord, please. Uh, All the voting and magic happens there. However, after multiple stages of eliminations and a very, very, very tight contest, Fire Emblem Three Houses is our game of the month for February. So give it up. Yay. Nice. Uh, I could not be more excited to play this game again, especially with the new DLC coming up. Uh, so it should be an awesome month. I, I really am looking forward to it. Uh, Sergio, I know you were wanting to get back to Fire Emblem. Are you excited about this? Yes, I am excited, and I am going to try to go back. It's it's perfect timing, you know, and we just got Violet, too, so it's all pointing towards it. It's all, and, uh, man, this this game barely got it over, actually, Ori in the Blind Forest, so I'm sure Ori will pop up again in the future and have another shot, so... But yeah, for, was, uh, yeah. <laughs> for the month, we're going to be talking about Fire Emblem. Um, and actually, we will finally get to do our spoiler cast, uh, which I'm very, very happy about. We'll bring in some guests and have a good time. So that's all I think I'm going to say. I, well, mm-hmm. Kevin, I know you did the Golden Deer route. Um, do you want to do another route for this? I'm going to go with the Golden Deer again. Nah, I'm jokes. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, you know, I thought about it because I don't want to lose Hilda again and other heavy armor characters that have have been blessed with in the past. But I'm thinking Blue Lions with a bit of Ashen. Ooh, that'd be good. Ooh. <laughs> you know, um, I know uh, Fly equals Fly is always a good choice, but sometimes you just want to roar your way out of the battlefield and... I think that's my stick. I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm gonna play on a hard difficulty and so the NJP packed. Hopefully, oh, I, hopefully I don't lose any more heavy armor characters because that has always been my. Oh no, <laughs> that's ah. that's pretty brutal. I'm, mm. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up my blue lines route and uh, our our good friend Shy. You're not gonna play it, so <laughs> he's, he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, so. For those of you listening to the first time, uh, Shy, returning guest, uh, he is known as Shy Guy in the Discord. We are very, very happy to have you on. So thanks again for for coming on and talking about some shoveling for us. So hey, this will be fun. Um, without further ado, Kevin, you want to set us up? Yeah. So, oh man. So as Daryl mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about shovel knight treasure trove it's the game of the month for january we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about many things about it for campaigns um you know what we liked about what we didn't like about it which probably won't be too many things and much much more so 
yeah, we're going to talk about Shovel Knight, just how you know, just what we've done with the game and news, um, including something that may or may not surprise you. But here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Number thirteen will blow your mind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> now that yes. is a sell if I've ever heard it. Um, <laughs> All right, so a little background on Shovel Knight, uh, since hopefully you're not sick of hearing about it yet. Um, the original game, Shovel of Hope, came out in uh, 2013, and since then, four full campaigns have been made for this game, including Shovel of Hope, and now a full-fledged fighting game. It finally wrapped up all of its uh, Kickstarter requirements in December of last year, so this has been a game that kind of grew and grew over the decade. Um with that, I think the first question is, so uh, for me, I played every game as it released. So I played Plague Knight as soon as it came out. I was a day one on Shovel Knight. Um, Spectre Knight was a, uh, a Switch launch title that I picked up at the Switch launch along with uh, pretty much Breath of the Wild, and that, that was about it. Um, and then King of Cards, yeah, I played that as soon as it came out. So uh, I did end up replaying everything for the game of the month, but I'll get into that before, uh, you know, l- later on. Uh, Sergio, what's your history with this game? My history, I got uh, Shovel Knight, uh, Shovel of Hope, the first one when it came out on the Wii U. I got it on launch. Um, you know what? I believe, if I'm remembering everything correctly, I was on vacation because I was playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. I think it came out around that time, and it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. I played I played a little bit of it. You know, I ended up going back to Animal Crossing, so I, I didn't what? play much. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Yeah. But... <laughs> when uh, Treasure Trove came out and we we finally got uh, King of Cards and all the campaigns were completed, I did play a little bit of each uh, on the Switch and even some Showdown. So I, I've tried a little bit and I liked a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Hmm. Fair enough. Uh, Kevin, what about you, man? Yeah, so for me, I picked up Shovel Knight when it came out on Steam back in that, I think it was like 2013, 2014. And then, you know, played through it really awesome i love there are two nights i love polar knight and propeller knight those are my two favorite bosses um i still love polar knight uh anyway and then yeah but propeller knight is terrible anyway. oh no, <laughs> no he's terrible. well to each their own but i recently well not too long ago i picked up shovel knight treasure trove i played you know the specter knight plague knight and then i finished king of cards which i which i really really did enjoy especially you know an inspiration from final fantasy 8 you know that card game <laughs> triple triad right yeah you are such a mark i know you know what i joustus you know as mentioned at the very beginning of yeah. the episode um but yeah i i just really enjoyed the way you know king knight moves and it's just He's just so like majestic and such a jerk at the same time. I mean, you know, I to me he's a very very likable character, and you know I actually have the King Knight amiibo in my hand right now. So thank you Sergio for that. I really appreciate it. I love <laughs> it to death. I bring it everywhere I go, ninety percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> on on weekdays. I have some questions. <laughs> intervention i'm just gonna (laughs) leave it alone i think it's usually in my backpack but no i really do like i don't really collect all amiibo but when i do i just put on display Um, yeah so i'm gonna give a i'm gonna give a quick shout out to our co-host sergio who was nice enough to actually ship us the amiibo of our favorite knights so i actually got uh, he sent me a plague knight so i've got uh him too it's just awesome you're you're the man (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Serge. So does that mean you kept Spectre Knight? I did until I gave it to Danny. Yeah, I can uh, probably use it more than I would. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, shout out to Danny. Uh, and yeah. then getting back, so Shy, uh, you're you're kind of the fun case here. Um, what had you played of Shovel Knight before this? Uh, before Game of the Month, I had played zero minutes of Shovel Knight. It's one of those I've always heard it was a great game and just never got around to it. So I actually played all four campaigns in like a three and a half, four week span. Uh, yeah. for those who don't know, <laughs> oh, I, wow. I, those who don't know, I teach and I got the game over winter break and was able to, to crank through a lot of it. Um, I didn't play showdown other than like 20, 30 minutes, but I was able to beat mm. the four main campaigns. 
Nice. So yeah, you got. Um, and what what I found, and and we'll get into this in a minute, but what I found was playing the games as they released versus playing them all back to back is two completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and almost I preferred them playing them back to back, even though there's a little bit of fatigue in there that does set in uh, near the end. But um, you get to a lot of the references, but I'll, I'll get to that. So, uh, I think to start off, you know overall thoughts of the package as a whole is this um so this game has been talked about a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh, by us and other people it's it's probably one of the you know showcase indie titles at this point uh just Mm -hmm. period one of one of the most successful kickstarters ever uh one of the coolest stories ever uh is it worth the hype i mean did it live up to your expectations for it whatever those may have been and the expectations that other people kind of set out well if if i could chime in i have this thing where i hate when stuff's overhyped and then i go to, to do it and i'm just like there's no way it could live up to that and i've heard about this series for six years and it lived up to the hype in, in every way. It, it was it was a fantastic title. I'm really glad I got to play it and, and experience it and understand you know why everybody's so so into it. So for me, as like a total outsider who just like kind of binged the whole game, it, it definitely lived up to that hype, and I, I enjoyed my time with it. And I've got a thing where I don't usually like action platformers. I get kind of kind of mad at them, but this. Every, everything about this package, not just the gameplay, and I'm sure we'll get into the music, the presentation, the story, every, everything was fantastic. I have almost no complaints about this game at all. So for me, it, it's hype level met. <laughs> yeah, nice. I mean, for me, it's just like, I think the my biggest impression is that it's as if you're taken back to a time where, you know, when you're a little kid and you're playing like games like Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda, and then, you know, honestly... If Shovel Knight were to be released back then, like that would, I mean, gosh, it just, it's as if it were to be released back then. Like it, it's, it just, it ages, it could have aged so well if it were released that time. And the fact right. that they were able to make this, you know, this kind of retro style kind of game, you know, in, in the last decade, like it, it just feels, it feels nice. It, it just, it's very clean. It's slick, you know, the platforming and different, and every night has different mechanics that you need to master. Like especially with Bomb Night, where you have, to, or sorry, not Bomb Night, <laughs> Plague Night, where you have <laughs> Bomb Night, night. <laughs> Bomb Night, Plague Night, where you have to hold the button down uh, to release the bomb. Then you can, you know, do that high jump that we mentioned uh, in our previous interview with Nick Wozniak. Like that was, I honestly have never seen that before in a game. And for me, like I was like, oh, okay, this is fairly new. Like there's just there's a variety of of ways to. Um, you know, to to get to know certain characters, and yeah, like Shai's mentioned, the music, the dialogue, we can get to that later. But yeah, like I just, it was a really, it met the hype overall, really good package, and um, you know, honestly, there, I, I, I wish I were in your shoes. I wanted to, I wish I could have played it as it were released because it, it, it was a bit of a fatigue, like playing back to back, and yeah, un- unfortunately, I only finished two out of four. Um, I did play, you know, Plague and Spectre, but I just, ah, it was, it was a bit difficult on my end, but yeah, I mean, King of Cards, wow, like, incredible, so. Nice, and I agree, I agree, I feel like the, the hype was met, and, you know, looking, looking, I guess, partially, like, as an outsider, somebody that didn't play nearly enough as you guys, or as I should have, and, you know, you, you see this very successful game that kind of took six to seven years to get fully completed, like the full vision that they had in mind. It seems, it sounds like a long time, but I feel like if you play the games like Daryl, like you did, you know, as they came out, I'm sure it didn't seem that long. Like, you, you got a good mm. feel every couple of years, and, and I'm sure that was a really nice way to experience the, the playthrough. Well, yeah, and it... <sighs> It was kind of interesting in that there was uh, almost always something Shovel Knight on the horizon. So this is the first time that we've been uh, where there's really not. I mean, there's, there's right. that Shovel Knight Dig game, which is a different developer, different gameplay style. Uh, you know, I'm interested, but um, it, yeah, this is this is kind of the first time in a while where we haven't known about another campaign or anything coming out. And uh, it was interesting uh, to play because I had kind of a weird history with it. Uh, when I played Shovel Knight, the original... Uh, I had heard nothing but but good things, and I kind of suffer, suffer from that um, <laughs> the same syndrome that Shy does. Of if something gets talked about a lot, I start kind of going, "Oh, okay, 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, and I played Shovel Knight and I enjoyed it, but I was like, all right, well, yeah, that was fun. Okay. You know, and then I kind of moved on. It wasn't. It wasn't like the hypest game in the world for me. I wasn't like, oh man, uh, retro platforming is back or you know, it, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, I enjoyed it, and I don't want to give the impression that I didn't. But it, you know, it was mm-hmm. like a yeah, that was that was a nice homage. Great music. You know, fun time. Um, it wasn't until Plague Knight came out, and Plague Knight is this like beautiful retelling of the first game, uh, from the uh, viewpoint of this like maniacal villain type who then turns out to kind of be a hero, and um, just the way they kind of interweaved those stories really, really pulled me into the game. That's uh, among the reasons why that's my favorite campaign. It's just that was the moment that it actually clicked. Then Spectre was just a great uh, title to play at the start of the Switch, and then King. Uh, King is probably the best game here, uh, mm. if if I'm being honest. It's probably the actual best. I feel like uh, Yacht Club actually grew, you know, over the years as they mm. were uh, making these games. They got better at it, and I feel like King is just kind of the culmination of all of that, even enough to throw in this uh, this card game that's a little bit uh, divisive. You know, not everybody likes it uh <laughs> some people love it and the fun thing is that it's completely optional so yeah if you like it play it if you don't you know you can still play the rest of the game which is kind of cool mm-hmm. yeah i was grateful it was optional because i had a and it's not not a fault of the game but it's a little i did go a little fatiguing to going uh, all four campaigns back to back to back and and uh sorry kevin but when my dad would play final fantasy 8 we both hated that card oh. game with a passion. We thought it was absolutely like, who thought to put this in there? Like we, we had Ready. discussions about how Fight. horrible it was. But anyway, so oh, then I, I opened I opened this Joustus game, and I just it was not for me. I could see it was well thought out. I could see how it was fun, and it wasn't because I got tilted. I was winning. I was just like, ah, no thanks. I, I just wanted to do the action platforming and, and go to the story. So I was grateful it was optional. Um, some some of the Members in the Discord told me I missed out on like a, a cool boss and an ending, but that that's what YouTube's for. So I, <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> no, fair enough. You know, I I totally empathize with you on that. I not a lot, it's not a big thing, you know, to uh, for the, the triple triad game. I know there were some people who loved it, some people who hated, it, some people were like yeah, whatever. But um, I guess personally for me, because I grew up uh, with the whole train car sort of thing, you know, with Magic the Gathering, you know, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh for a little bit. And it, I just thought it was nice to to have, like, this card game you can play inside the game. Like, man, like, and there's, like, different caricatures, and, like, you can build your deck, and um, there's different special effects in Joustus where you can, like, bomb another <laughs> card or, like, push it to the <laughs> side. Like, think, or things like that. And, like, it, it's just... Yeah, it gets a little insane uh, by the end. They start adding like automatically moving cards that flip directions and blow each other up and stuff. So, like it from the start of it, it's actually fairly simple, and then they start adding, <laughs> adding on to the complexity each time. Um, yeah. What's weird is I, I kind of had this like revelation moment. I was like, oh, I get this. And as soon as I did that, then I was like, well, this is great. This is fantastic. <laughs> but until then, I was like, wait. What am I actually supposed to be doing here? Like, how do I? How do I? How win? How how do win? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had the same feeling. I had the same feeling when even when playing Final Fantasy VIII Triple Triad. Like, man, like, you know, how do you? Like, it took me a while before I actually got like, okay, this is how you, you know, beat your opponent. But, um, see, I felt pretty. I don't know. I only played on the first world, so I got a limited perspective. But I, I never lost. I think I got it. But it was just. I didn't like the idea of how my time was spent with that game could be determined by some random random number generator stuff, and you know, depending if you get the right card at the right time, and I just didn't want to invest my time that way, and then just have some random thing undo my progress. And I was enjoying the game, and I wanted to keep it that way, so I just <laughs> waved the, I waved the white flag and just blew through the levels instead. Yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, to paraphrase that, I'm totally better than you guys, but yeah, I didn't oh. want to flaunt it too much, so I just. You know, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the first world's rounds aren't that hard. I'm sure you guys did fine. It was just, I just uh-huh, thought, man, sure. if I if I pull the wrong card and I lose over that, I'm going to be so annoyed. I just, I just, 
I don't like when a game, I feel like a game doesn't respect my time and I just, mm. I, so before, mm. I was like prevent defense. Before I got mad at the game, I just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can respect that. Um, mm. That's that's actually maybe my uh, my New Year's resolution for this year. So there you go. <laughs> so I let's actually get like I you know there's not a whole lot to say about Joustus other than it's I, I think it's fun. I would love a mobile app of it. I told uh, I told Nick that um, mm-hmm. you know it, it would be fun to play that against people for sure and have our own little Yu Gi Oh type uh battles going on but <laughs> let's let's move back kind of to the actual uh platforming so mm-hmm. uh it, i this is kind of the opinion that i got on the game like shovel knight plays it fairly safe the first game does uh it mm-hmm. kind of plays like uh ducktales meets zelda 2 in a way uh, meets Mega Man a little bit. Like you can, you can definitely see all the references. You can see where they come from. The character controls exactly like you'd, you'd expect. Then each of the other three games is completely different than anything you have ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, Spectre probably being like the most obvious with his dash attacks and such. Uh, Plague Knight is something that man, yeah, hold a button to blow yourself up and propel yourself across a room. I've never played a game like that. Yeah, um, that threw me off quite a bit. Like, and even like King Knight, like you got to shoulder bash stuff so you can twirl, so you can break blocks, so you right. can move down. <laughs> and if you bounce on a couple times, then you can shoulder bash again. Like I don't even know how they came up with some of that stuff. Um, it it doesn't have too many references as far as I can tell. Um, but what I did appreciate about these games was like just that, just the variety of how each character moved and how they designed the worlds for that. I, I think for me, and just to add on what you said about like King Knight and how he twirls, I feel like it's just some sort of like swagger. Like they just want to employ like even when you beat the final boss and the last thing you do is to twirl and like you, you break into the the boss's like head slash skull thing and it's like it was so rated beautiful. m for mature <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, let's, let me just we should preface that yeah thanks um and it, for some reason it was to me it was gorgeous and morbid at the same time like he's oh god oh, twirling <laughs> into his skull but it's gorgeous like wow like how? not that gorgeous <laughs> dr- dr- I, drilling I, I, into a being skull with your feet is not really a gorgeous act there well well i mean in, <laughs> morbid like, i get yes <laughs> well in, I, I guess i guess the way that they visualize it too and just like you know you finally beat the last boss and like in the background it's just like they're just like you know emphasizing his victory and okay maybe maybe gorgeous is not the right word but um, yeah. well or just I, an excuse for to say it but I liked how the movements seemed to encapsulate each character. Like like Shovel Knights was pretty basic, but here's this stoic knight that's pretty straightforward guy and mm-hmm. Plague is a little mischievous and his movement is tricky and it's it's uh hard to kind of predict and it's hard to use and it's it's built on all this alchemy and, and goofy Almost stuff. Almost chaotic in yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah. And it it suited his character and then Spectre's all stealthy and, and uh or he's he's got that warrior background. You felt like a strong warrior when you're him. And and King here, he's flying around and twirling in gold armor. He wants everybody <laughs> to see him, right? It, 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 so like the movement went hand in hand with the character. It felt pretty organic. Uh, and I, and two, that it wasn't. I was worried it would feel gimmicky. Mm. Uh, and I got a little tired of Plague, but uh, that's. <laughs> Honestly, probably because I wasn't so good at moving him around. It wasn't that anything was wrong with the game. But they, they they were able to use that movement mechanic over and over again with it out ever really feeling old or go, here we go again. Like, it always felt fun and, and engaging. And I, it was interesting that I just, there's really one one main type of movement for each character, but it never... It never felt old, I guess. I kind of repeat myself, but I appreciated that when I was playing these games. I was worried. I was like, I got to do this bomb jump over and over again, but it <laughs> well, was good. Yeah. It was fun. Well, it was kind of interesting, and that's almost a credit to the the level design uh, yeah. that they actually went for. So um, King Knight and Spectre Knight had their own levels, so they weren't mm-hmm. really, you know, it was the same settings as the Shovel Knight campaign, but it was not the same levels. So they were tailored tailor-made for the moveset you could tell um and you know they fit and especially with king knight i some of the really interesting stuff that they were like well you've got a shoulder bash and you've got a twirl and that's pretty much all we can count on you having because you've got relics but they couldn't make sure that you had the relics so you've got to be able to play the game without that there's also achievements for doing it without relics right Mm -hmm. um 
yeah, their their capacity for keeping things interesting with such a limited move set for each character was really cool. Um, I'm not actually terribly sure how they did it, to be honest, but there was just like enough unique scenarios. And they kind of did the Mega Man thing of, okay, we're going to let you practice this in kind of a safe environment. And mm-hmm. now you're moving to an unsafe environment. <laughs> <laughs> like we're going to show you this enemy and then we're going to show you this jump. And then the next thing you see is going to be this enemy and this jump together, you know, and, and it's a completely new thing. And they just, they did that, you know, dozens of times on different iterations of things and such. It was um, really interesting, especially in King. Yeah. But what I really liked is that uh, Plague Knight actually used, you know, with minor modifications, the same levels that uh, Shovel Knight did. Right. Um, yeah. And what I really like about the Plague Knight campaign in general is sections of the Shovel Knight campaign that were really frustrating, Plague Knight literally just jumps over. And it's really, <laughs> really funny once you get kind of used to his movement and, uh, you know, how he does. Uh, you know, you're never going to be like a thousand percent confident that he's going to do exactly what you want. There will always right. be like, <laughs> oh, God, I jumped. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and sometimes you can save it. Sometimes you can't. Um, but what it, when it does work, when it flows, man, you feel like a speed runner. <laughs> and I think that's really nice to, to say, because it's, that's their design decision. Like they want, it, it's like a, it's a fair challenge and, you know, like for, to learn about all these different mechanics. And then one of the things that I really liked how they, what they borrowed was, uh, from demon souls. When you, you know, when you died, you lose some gold, but you have the chance to get it back. So yeah. And I think that's that's pretty fair. And I'm like, oh, and I remember the first time that happened, like, oh god, nightmares, demon souls, why? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know, like, how to react at the time because I had a hard time with demon souls. Like, it took me like four hours to beat the first level or so, whatever. It might have been taking longer, but, um, but then I realized, oh, okay, it's actually not like demon souls, just that one mechanic, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> or that one thing. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's, it, it is fair. And then for me, I, I guess it was a little. Like, every time, like, oh, God, like, I want to save all my gold. And, like, there's times where I would die at a certain area where, like, if I were to go back, there's no way I'm going to get that gold back. So I might as well just, like, leave it, forget it, <laughs> right, and right. just keep going yeah, on. So. I died more times trying to recover gold than, like, <laughs> anything else in these games. <laughs> yeah. I'll say I had a lot more fun when I stopped caring about gold, which is kind of hard in King Knight when you want to make everything fancy. But Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so... Yes, I mean Sergio. Offhand, you you played a bit of each campaign. Did you, did one stand out for you that was you know, you were like, man, this this would be my campaign. Yeah, if I had to pick one, it would be Spectre Knight. I really like the way he controls and like the shifting moves that he does. Uh, you know, depending if you're going up or down, it, it changes the direction of your dash. Um, that was pretty cool. And also, honestly, Plague Knight. Um, so a friend of the show, Danny, told me, you know. Plague is gonna control very different from uh, just uh, Shovel Knight, uh, Shovel of Hope. Um, you're in for a surprise, and he was definitely right. It took me a little while uh, to get used to it, but I actually ended up really liking the way that Plague controls. Uh, going back to what you all said, you know, they're all very different campaigns, but I think more importantly that they're different. They're all, they're all very fun. They're different, but mm. it's still fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would definitely agree <laughs> with that. Like, it's just. Uh, the amount of variety they got kind of packed into this game uh, is, is just huge. And and playing it back-to-back, you really feel that. Uh, that, like, they could have just... They, they honestly could have just, like, put a different character in the Shovel Knight campaign and, oh, okay, run these stages again. But they didn't do that right. um, after Plague. Like, Plague Knight was the only one that did that. And it actually made story sense that he did because it's happening at the same time. Um, and he's kind of following or, or slightly ahead of, of Shovel Knight the entire time. So... Um, some of the story there is hilarious, but uh, uh, let's let's um, I think let's go ahead and get into like the presentation. So, uh, what did you guys overall think about the look, the sounds, music? Maybe uh, you know, what'd you like? I I thought that it just everything just fit nicely. You know, it's as if I were back when I was like five years old playing, you know, a retro action platformer. Like I I would I would have like been playing twenty four seven. Shovel Knight, if I were a little kid, like just amazed by the music and how it plays, and um, learning like how to move the characters and stuff. Like I, I have a soft spot for Shovel Knight, uh, the original, and um, I, I just it just all folds together. I mean, you can't really quantify these sort of things, because um, you know, it just I don't know it. And I thought the dialogue was really good too. Like you know, it was funny. There's some jokes here and there, and there's you know, 
truffle, like the the apple fish. Like it's how it's, did... it's trouple, trouple, Kevin. Trouple. Ah, oh, gosh, Nick, don't kill me. Ah, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> trouble. So, um, yeah, I I think it's yeah. I don't know what to say other than that. So, I mean, I I like the even just navigating the menus, especially when you had a lot of relics. They did it where it was really easy to do. I appreciated mm-hmm. Plague Knight where you could make changes on the fly with the triggers. Uh, that, right. that that was a nice touch. I mean, the music, I guess, you don't, what what can you say other than it's absolutely fantastic? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, a lot, a lot of Mega Man vibes there, but that's a good thing. Uh, I I guess a, my only complaint on the, it, all that's all high energy chip tune, and I'm not necessarily a high energy guy, especially at the end of the day. So sometimes I played with the volume down there a little bit, but I mean, <laughs> that, that, that soundtrack, but that's just me personally. I mean, overall, that soundtrack's absolutely fantastic and where they had variations for each uh, campaign too. I mean, it's got four separate albums. It, it's, it's a great, it's a, one of the, really one of the best modern soundtracks I've probably heard in a long time. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, overall, and just simple things. The game boots fast; it feels snappy. The the presentation overall is great. Yeah, and and getting back to like uh, respecting your time, uh, I don't say this a lot. Uh, I I grew up in the NES era. Actually, um, I extended the NES era after the Super Nintendo came out for a little while. <laughs> um, so I I played a lot on NES. I I definitely you know I had beaten all the Mega Man games and you know Zelda two and and all the games. Um, that this game kind of referenced. I played back when I was a kid. Mm. Um, I don't say this a lot with indie games because I kind of uh, either I don't feel it. Uh, like it, it, indie games sometimes come off kind of like a cover song to me. So it's like, mm. hey, hey, yeah. is that game you used to play? Kind of, and then that kind <laughs> of really kills it. I'm just like, mm, no. Um, I get into this a lot with indie games, uh, not really knowing how to design enemies in particular. Like uh, I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of times they uh, they focus so much on their main character and they love that main character, whoever it is. And then the enemies are like, okay, here's this random blob, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And that that happens a lot. I don't I don't want to give any specific examples because I don't want to call anybody out. Um, this is the only real example that I have. That to be honest, um, I think Shovel Knight is literally better than those NES games. Like, I would rather play Shovel Knight than the old classic Mega Man's at this point, which blows my mind. Um, <laughs> because you know, Mega Man games they, they are kind of responsible for you know showing how the genre could be made. Like, they are the games that have like these shining examples of teaching the player. Uh, through you know context clues and like simple level design like again like I was saying hey here try this jump okay here's what this enemy does but he can't hit you as soon as you walk in the room so you got to see him attack once uh, before you can even get to him and then you know what to do like it, there was all this like clever level design in the old Mega Man games this picks it up and just does a, such a better job of pretty much everything else like all the navigation the story is much better. Uh, the game plays right. really, really mm-hmm. well. Um, you know, Plague Knight himself is so interesting mechanically to play. Uh, it's it's more interesting than anything anything in the Mega Man series because Mega Man was pretty much run, jump, and shoot, right? He's more like Shovel Knight. Um, so if mm-hmm. that's kind of the baseline, and I'm saying that Shovel Knight is maybe the weakest campaign here, you know, that's, that's where I come off like, man, Yacht Club killed this. And I, I really do. I think they did a really, really nice job uh, paying homage to the the classics, but not being afraid to move past them. Oh, yeah, I, I certainly agree. And I was worried because I, I have this checkered history with those old uh, action platformers. And I thought, oh, gosh, I'm going to hate this game. And it's game of the month. And I'm going to be the <laughs> grouch on the Discord. But the, like you said, it was it was cleverly designed where it's teaching you how to play as you go and I had what I felt like some cheap deaths, but everybody li- likes to make that excuse. But I never felt like so frustrated I wanted to quit. The, the save points are generous enough. Um, and if you don't want them, you can destroy them if you want the challenge uh, uh, of that. Right. But, yeah, that nice. and, and the movement just felt so good. Some of those old games, like we rose-colored glasses then, but if you just like didn't have a history and you booted up the game. Yeah, go play Ninja Gaiden right now and you oh will throw gosh. your controller. You will yeah. throw it. Because mm-hmm. that game is Hardcore. awful at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh, yeah. So it kind of has that modern, you know, the the tight movement and everything. And yeah, it, it is. I kind of 
go with what Kevin said too. If I had this game as a kid, like I probably wouldn't have had friends. I would just be playing it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. like it, it's, it, it is good. Shovel it, it, like, Knight is my friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shovel Knight. Oh man. So fair to say, uh, we're all we all like this game like a lot, right? Like mm-hmm. fair to say, this came out pretty rosy. You know, it ended up on my games of the decade. So I, you know, you already know <laughs> that I like it. Um, but overall, you right. know, if if you were forced to give the package as a whole, like a score, or you know, what would you know, if you were forced to score it or just talk about it, what would you what would you say? For me, it's an easy nine out of ten. Uh, it's kind of hard to hit the ten out of ten for me, but I mean it 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 it's hard not to recommend this game to anybody that that's into this this genre. It, absolutely fantastic mm-hmm. through and through like i said earlier there's there's virtually no flaws with the entire package that like you said yacht club they they nailed it they invested the time and it, it's paid off mm. yeah i mean personally for me i'd give the same score you know and for 20 25 dollars like you get you get what five games in one like that's it's crazy i can't even you know you get you you have so much uh there's like so much variety and then you have showdown too which <laughs> i mean that that's another adventure in itself like just with you know using different characters about each other like i i, I you can't beat that like it, it's a solid 9 out of 10 and uh just and as what uh shy mentioned i mean the game just works it loads up fast you're able to get in play and go like that's it like it you don't have to wait for like a minute or two or whatever like there's, it just it's like snap snap action just very clean and it's a must play i i i I hope it was one of my special mentions for the game of the decade. If not, then it should be. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I actually agree. I, I would give it a 9 out of 10 as well. And, <laughs> you know, I, honestly, I didn't play much of this game because, I don't know, for some reason I'm not in the mood for a, a game of this type. But from what I played, I can tell this is really good. And, you know, as long as you like the genre, first of all, and you're in the mood for that, this game has a lot to offer. All of the campaigns are very different. And at the same time, however, the, the worlds in the story are all cohesive and, and tied together. So there's a lot to experience and a lot of fun here. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. we've not even gotten onto the, the depth of the campaigns. There's New Game Plus. There's all these collectibles. There's all these secret rooms. like Challenge it, modes. Right. Yeah, all these merit. Like, yeah, it, it's a completionist dream. You could You could dump a hundred hours into this easy and yeah <laughs> on top of all that we've not even really mentioned showdown and i know kevin did real quick but i mean i learned in a different interview they said every character has their own little storyline in that game all 30 right <laughs> on top of it being fun all like them. the fighting in that game's a lot of fun i just ran out of yeah. time to play it yeah i wish uh and i understand why they didn't this was like the last kickstarter thing i wish this game had online i really do because mm. i would play a lot of it um, playing against the computer kind of feels like playing against the computer in Smash. It's fun, and then it gets old, and then that's it. Um, but right. playing with people, so actually, um, my my dad visited me uh, not not too long ago. We played some Showdown. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's easy. One one thing I really like about it is that each character only has like you know what four things that they can do or so. Um, it's that's pretty easy to convey to somebody who has never even played Shovel Knight before uh, and have some fun with. So yeah, I, I really like Showdown. Um, I don't, I'm not going to talk too much about it because it, the story is kind of, uh, like, you know, arcade fighting game (laughs) story. Like each character has like a a beginning and a wrap up and there's some character interactions in the middle, but yeah, it's not, I'll say it's a little bit light (laughs) there, but the characters are actually different. And what's fun is that they play like their iterations in Shovel Knight. So when you play as Polar Knight, yeah, you're, you're kicking snowballs and, and, um, you know, doing his, uh, shovel drop from the ceiling and stuff. So, and you're playing as this like freaking gigantic character, which is just kind of fun in, in, in its own way. So, um, yeah, I like showdown a lot. Uh, it's, I think it's definitely a side mode of this, uh, bundle for me but it is a fun one so we'll, hmm. we'll say that but yeah there's uh, as you were saying shy uh there's like challenge modes and things um that mix things up for you i played a few of them um i 100 percent of the campaigns uh i got all the collectibles and everything i did not go back and try a new game plus i did that uh originally uh as the games were releasing it was just it's just not my favorite thing it, it's kind of in the line of okay now do that again but harder and i'm like well no <laughs> you know yeah like i like hard games but i don't really like repeating myself 
uh, a lot. Mm. I don't really like repeating myself. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, thanks for laughing at that. Uh, it's, just, <laughs> uh, it's just not not my not my shtick, and that's okay. Uh, but what I will say is, you know, I I dumped, jeez, I, I dumped upwards of thirty hours into this game pretty easy, uh, mm-hmm. and that for what I got as a twenty five dollar indie game, hey, I'm you know I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. It's definitely great value. And same thing with the challenges. I was like, well, I could spend time going through this again, or I could experience a brand new game. Like, got to weigh out that balance. So I, I decided to move on, but I could see myself, you know, going back to this since there's such a shortage of games on the Switch. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're only up to like 800 or so now. Oh, man. I've already beaten them all, you know. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but uh, to give it an actual score, it fell right in that 9 out of 10. I just think that that's the right spot for it, uh, mm. to be honest. It's not what I would consider uh, a, a perfect game or necessarily a masterpiece type game that you would be given to the 10 out of 10s. I do reserve those um, for for all the games that I talked about in our Game of the Decade uh, discussion. Um, but, you know, this is a game that I will go back to. I have a lot of fun playing. Um, while there are some cheap deaths here and there, uh, there are some of the most infuriating video game enemies of all time. Those little <laughs> green guys with fans that blow oh, you off your platform. I hate PTSD. You. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> I don't say that much, uh, but oh man, you little jerks. Uh, anyways, um, so yeah, there's there's a few things here and there I don't really love about the game, but overall, man, this is a great game. It really is. The music is fantastic. The art is great. Um, and the thing that I really grew to appreciate, and I, I said I would bring this back, um, playing all the campaigns in order, when we talked to Nick Wozniak from uh, Yacht Club, he mentioned a lot of the you know, kind of ongoing inside jokes and references between the games and such. You really get a sense of that when you're playing the games back to back. Like you do have mm-hmm. that iteration where, you know, you come across the kid that's talking about being really fast and then you see, you know, King Knight tell him, well, yeah, just tell everybody you're fast. You don't have to back it up. Right. Um, <laughs> you also see like the evolution of characters like Percy, the horse and, uh, you know where the where the travel king is each time, which changes, and it's just funny each time. Uh, it's just yeah, playing King Knight, you actually get to see how he usurped the the current king, um, which you know was like barely explained in Shovel Knight, and then it was this this gigantic thing in in King of Cards. Um, yeah, it's just it was really really interesting to play them all back to back and not have like years of of brain fog right. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Because when I, when I was originally playing King Knight, I was like, yeah, I kind of vaguely remember this, but, uh, hmm. <laughs> and I appreciate the impact that it has on our Discord community. Like, when it was announced that Shovel Knight would be our game of the month, like, there was, it was, like, nonstop chatter about the game and, like, tips and tricks on, like, how to, you know, do certain things to get that last coin or whatever. Like, it was just, like, a ball. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome. And we have some pretty... Awesome reviews, actually, that we like to share um, from people. But before we do, is there any uh, any other less rem- remarks or comments from y'all about um, this collection of games? Just if you need help, ask Sonic King nine one seven on the Discord. <laughs> yeah, that yes. guy knows everything about this <laughs> game and is so helpful. If you so tell him you're him. missing a single collectible, odds are he'll tell you where it is, even if you don't know which one you're missing. I don't know. <laughs> I. Yeah, what is I, incredible. He he is a walking encyclopedia of Shovel Knight. I think he's probably the number one fan. I, I would say, like, just does he every... does he have a notebook of Shovel Knight or? Yeah, I mean, I, I would <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he has everything in his head and like just memorize everything. Like that would be incredible. I I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm sure he has just a, <laughs> just a wealth of knowledge with this one series. I've never seen any. Well. I know Sergio has a love for Animal Crossing, but like with Sonic King, like just love of Shovel Knight. Like, my God, like it's you. You can he'll win in trivia every time. <laughs> well, honestly, that was infectious. Like when I started yeah. to feel a little fatigued, like people would talk about what they appreciated about the game, and I was like, oh yeah, that is pretty awesome. It did make me want to just hop hop right back into it. So so the community was a big help uh, with that. It's one of my favorite things with Game of the Month, seeing everybody kind of rally around a common common theme there. Oh yeah, mm. for sure, and. This was probably my favorite one to do since uh, Killer Queen, actually. So, yes. uh, just because there were there were like you said, there was a ton of people talking all the time. Again, uh, if you want to play along with us, you know, jump in our Discord. It's fun. It, it's just it, that's all I'll say. It's just fun. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we can actually get into, so uh, speaking of our Discord, we had uh, a bunch of people write reviews, but we also had one person send in a voice review. So uh, shout out to to Napping Rat, um, who we almost got to be on this show. We'll get him on in a future episode uh, at this point. But he did uh, record a little voice clip for us, so we're going to listen to that right now. Here we go. This is Napping Rat from the Nintendo Jump Discord. I bought a Switch at launch March 2017 with a cartridge of 1-2 Switch, don't really want to talk about that, some eShop money, and a Shovel Knight Amiibo, the blue one. Since I didn't really play a whole lot of 1-2 Switch by myself, Shovel Knight was the first game that I really dove into. It was the first thing I ever beat on my new console, and it was really a great reintroduction to console gaming for me. I like platformers. Sometimes they can be really hard. Shovel Knight was hard, hard enough to feel accomplished when I beat it, but the modern touches really made it more accessible than I thought it was originally at the time. There are no lives, you just lose gold, uh, checkpoints everywhere, uh, relic powers that can be overpowered if you need them to be, if you really want to use them. Uh, They really make it, I think, fun for a wide range of skill levels. I think the King Knight campaign is now my favorite, but I really think all of Treasure Trove is just a a wonderful little package for uh, anyone who likes platformers. The pixel art is beautiful, the chiptunes are, you know, unbelievable, and uh, I just highly, highly recommend the game. It is absolutely one of my favorite games on Switch. Thanks. Very nice. So Shovel Knight slightly better than 1-2 Switch confirmed. (laughs) (laughs) I think that was the main message there, I I think. I think that was too. (laughs) Man, yeah, I didn't expect that. I was like, oh, hmm, tell me about 1-2 Switch. (laughs) I've never played 1-2 Switch, so I can't really judge. uh, Oh, we can judge even whether or not we played it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. Everything's fair game. All right. Well, (laughs) I, I like his point. We hit on it somehow. The game can appeal to a wide range of skill levels. I mean, there's a base level of difficulty to this game, but you can use all the relics and make it as easy as you want, or you can make this game as difficult as you want on yourself. And I like, I like that. There's a lot of customization, a lot of options there for everybody. Yeah, especially if you uh, if you go start chasing the feats, like not using relics at all and things that <laughs> that gets a bit hard. And especially Ooh. the speed running feats and such. Yeah, those get mm. <laughs> super fun. <laughs> Uh, just to go through some stats, so uh, I did this a little differently this month, and we actually put out a survey which allows me to give statistics, which <laughs> my engineering mind is uh, applauding right now. Um, so of the people who answered the survey, which were 12 people, actually, which is not bad, uh, so we asked them, had you played Shovel Knight Treasure Trove before it was announced as Game of the Month? And uh, came down to... Uh, about a third of them had said yes, all of it. Uh, more people said yes, some of the campaigns, but 25% said they had not played Shovel Knight uh, before it was Game of the Month. So 25% of people uh, were brand new on this. Um, uh, we asked which games and campaigns did you play. Pretty much all of them wound up around 90%, uh, with the exception of Showdown, which is a little lower, <clears throat> as you might expect. Um, which was your favorite game or campaign? I love this question because... Uh, so Shovel of Hope, uh, was called the favorite campaign by 18% of people. Um, the other three were tied at 27%. So Play, Spectre, and King all had three responses calling it their favorite game Mm. or campaign, which Mm. I think if, if you polled us, uh, Shai, what's your favorite campaign? Mine was actually Shovel of Hope. I was one of those uh, that responded that way. Yep, mine was Plague of Shadows. Sergio, yours was Spectre. Yes. And Kevin? King Knight. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) This is why this happens, because they're all good guys. That's what we're saying. (laughs) Nice. Um, (laughs) What overall score would you give to Shovel Knight as a whole? Uh, Yeah, 9 out of 10. So we got uh, 10 responses to this question. The total was, you know, it it averaged out at a 9.2 out of 10. Ooh, um, there you go. And then we're going to actually get into some uh, actual reviews, which I've got ri- listed here. Uh, so, Sergio, you want to take the first one? Sure. We have a quick little review by Floof Oof, and they say, This game is a masterpiece. Every time I play, I am charmed by the characters and thrilled by the gameplay. And don't get me started on the music. All the characters in this game control magnificently, and the platforming is always a thrilling challenge that never gets frustrating. To anyone who likes 2D platformers, this game is a must. 
Very nice. Mm. Phoenix Wright. I feel like I can't really review it because I didn't get to play it or play as much as I would like, would have liked this month. However, what I did play was very enjoyable, and I can see why it is so well liked and came so highly recommended to me. I am glad it's a part of my game collection. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, the big shot wrote in, and I, I kind of identify with him. He talks about how he initially just did not like the game, how he felt it was kind of frustrating and the music was too busy and, and loud. But after having the Switch for two years and he revisited this game, you know, he's grown in his appreciation uh, for games and game design. He said he looked at the pixel art, found it beautiful. He finds the music fun now. He listens to it at work. He appreciates the varied levels and creative hidden areas like we've talked about. And he says he gets the hype now and sees why it's so highly rated. And he enjoys how easy it is to pass a Joy-Con uh, to a friend and watch them get into it and to have fun. He said he appreciates not just the gameplay, but the overall package like we've discussed. So uh, I, I appreciate that. That's, you know, maybe on the surface level, if you're frustrated initially, you could write this game off easily. But if you give it a chance and really look at it in depth, as, as pretty much everyone's universally said, it's fantastic. Yeah, and I'm mm-hmm. glad he got to give it a, another chance as part of, uh, actually, as part of the game of the month. You know, that that kind of yeah. uh, does my heart good because you know I got to play him again, which I really enjoyed uh, doing. I, I found kind of a new appreciation for him. It feels like it kind of feels like a lot of people did. So that's a nice thing um, <laughs> when everybody's mm-hmm. not just like, "Why'd you pick this? This sucks." You know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sonic King, our resident uh, Einstein, wrote in uh, Shovel Knight was an excellent love letter to old school gaming with amazing modernizations mixed in thanks for that Ooh. uh solid platforming wonderful story and world building that i can't wait to visit again far and away my game of the decade oh wow that's no surprise nice. there yeah yeah, yeah it's mean, not that's not too surprising but i did want to to emphasize it so nice, nice. good stuff <laughs> so for teet said the best thing that can be said about the whole treasure trope experience is that each game has something new to offer Each game has new mechanics, new stages, but most importantly, a new way to play with each character in their respective story. And he also highlighted how the stories or the campaigns are very different. Some are more humorous and some are more emotional. He also said that Shodan is a very worthy addition that is fun, single player or with friends. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Dragon says, Shovel Knight felt very simple gameplay-wise and pacing-wise, while Plague felt like an experimental take on the original campaign with deeper mechanics. Spectre Knight felt more involved plot-wise, and they were able to run with a single mechanic even further than before. And lastly, King Knight felt like a culmination of everything that they've learned and felt like Yacht Club games hitting their full stride. For me, King Knight uh, over Plague Knight and Spectre Knight, and then that over Shovel Knight. So I think it's a really important point that Dragon made because, you know, the way that they made these games, it's like they are constantly evolving one game after another. You see the progression. You see the way they learn from their the previous iteration of Shovel Knight or previous iteration of the, of the Knight and just, you know, being able to you know, build on top of over and over. And uh, I do want to mention one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, it, w- with the way that King Knight was made... I felt like the the way they paced the levels was just so much better. They were shorter. They were just you know, it's, it just it just felt right. And then yeah, I think it's a definitely a good a good point to and it's, I mean six years of just like you know going back and forth with with these games. I mean, it, it, this is an example of of good game building progression uh, from a series like, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for us next time. So. Mm. Well, uh, building on those sentiments, and my apology if I mispronounce your name, is it for Roar's Dragon? Uh, he says, The game is really tight, well put together platformer. The style and gameplay really bring you back to the golden days. But the best thing about it is how much love they packed into it. They went out of their way to make every campaign unique and charged nothing for them. You know a game is good when you wish you could pay for stuff they gave you for free. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Sergio, that's do you identify Wait. with that? <laughs> <laughs> how, how much money have you spent on Pocket Camp now? Oh, man. Probably 120 something. Oh, God. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. The point to the point, Yacht Club, I mean, no one, I think, could call them a lazy uh, developer. They really 
every detail is oh, pretty right. well well thought out. Uh, even even the puns in the game, we didn't even get into that. Uh, you know, <laughs> There's so as, many good ones. Oh man! Yeah, as, as a teller of dad jokes, uh, oh, I I borrowed those and acted like they were mine. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and and it shows like when they're so emotionally invested into something like the dialogue, we as the game players, we or the gamers, we get more invested into it as well. And so it's it's that connection um, that they have with us gamers and being able to enjoy, you know, this wonderful experience of of you know platformers so i mean it, this is what this is a great representation of you know a set of games coming from the the, the industry i mean this i mean if every if more if more companies can follow this formula i think we'd be in a much better uh more much better world of like different kinds of games and and having more of that love and and hopefully uh yeah just sending a great message that hey like you can make a game as fun and wacky as Shovel Knight, and it works. <laughs> and and it works mm. that well in the same way that a Nintendo game does. Nintendo games, that, yes. they can be epic and still fun at the same time, and funny. Like, see Zelda games always have funny moments, depend, like no matter what how dark the story is or anything like that. Uh, they're built on making games fun first, and... It really feels like Yacht Club t- kind of took a page out of their book, and they're like, no, we're going to make this game a lot of fun. And we're going to fill in the story to make it work, and we're going to throw in a lot of puns and dad jokes and stuff uh, because you know we find that funny and we love it, so there you go. But yeah, you can definitely feel... Uh, there's certain games that you play, and you just kind of feel like, man, somebody loved this. Like, somebody really loved making this. Uh, and that almost always puts a smile on my face and makes me enjoy their game even more so yeah that's that's definitely how i felt i that's a that's a very very good point there um but yeah i mean basic takeaway if you have not pay, uh, played shovel knight you've heard it over the years uh because of course you have unless you're living under a rock right but for whatever reason <laughs> you haven't uh you, you haven't uh dove in yet uh you should like it's it's worth it. This game is not just hype. It's actually stood the test of time. Um, y- you can tell it's not hype because you know it came out seven years ago at this point, point. Uh, and we're still you know not only us, other people are still talking about this game as as kind of this revered thing. So yeah, it's it's a very very good game, very worth your time, and in my opinion, um, one of the best examples of what an indie game should be. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And as a quick mm. PSA, I think it's forty dollars on the Nintendo eShop, but you can get it digitally through most retailers like Best Buy and whatnot for twenty five still. So keep an eye out on that. Yeah, mm. and even if it goes up to forty uh, in those places, they have been discounting it pretty uh, pretty regularly. So just keep an eye out. Even as a forty dollar price point, I think it's still worth it. Forty dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> easily like yeah but if you, if you can save 15 bucks then that's uh that's hollow night for you go buy that one too ah, that's true so yep. buy mm-hmm. all the night games there you go <laughs> <Night> games. <laughs> oh. uh, so unless you guys have anything else i think that's probably gonna wrap us for uh shovel night um i really really enjoyed this game of the month i'm glad we did it i'm glad you guys voted for it i hope you really enjoyed it too um and thanks for everybody who wrote in you guys have anything else you want to say no, I think I'm good. How about you guys? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Well, speaking of enjoying and good, I think Sergio has enjoyed his day <laughs> quite a bit. Um, <laughs> would you like to talk about what just happened today? Would you like to world? talk about your recent financial decisions? <laughs> <laughs> How many switches do you own now, Sergio? I guess technically I own three. Nice. <laughs> How many yeah. hands do you have? <laughs> so um today we finally got the announcement of an, an official animal crossing theme switch and it's a switch not a switch light and oh, honestly the best part of it is the dock the dock looks amazing it looks very nice so yes pre-ordered as soon as i could ready Dude, mm. everything looks good on it everything oh, yeah. <laughs> the joy con color is fantastic it's like kind of a pastel blue and green uh you know a slightly different color but it's just nice the back of the switch has like a special design on it but it's not like garish it's like right you know, actually nice the dock is adorable like i saw that and I, like i'm not even i'm not even the animal crossing fan that you are at all like i, I don't really play these games i will um this this year but uh <laughs> i looked at that and i was like man that's adorable <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, yeah, way yeah. better than I expected they would. If they even did one, and they did, and it's crazy. I really wish they can release the Joy-Con separately, because I am so tempted to buy them <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I think they are in Japan. You just got to import them, so. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Well. Yeah, through Play Asia, You'll pay a little bit more, and they'll take a while to get here, but you can get them. Oof. All right. Man. Now I'm thinking about my own financial decisions. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, you know what? For another day. Well, I have I have an update on this. Yeah, I have pre-ordered one of these. Oh, damn. oh, nice. That's pretty because good. because my my wife Bexilla saw this and said <laughs> instantly tagged me and said, "Oh my god, this is great!" And I was like, "Well, guess what I'm gonna do?" And Bye. and she she wisely <laughs> tagged you publicly. So if you didn't get oh, it, oh, the peer pressure know. was on yeah. for sure. It was on. Uh-oh. Well played, Bexilla. Well played. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so uh we'll figure out exactly what we're doing with that and the other two switches that we have because again if you have more switches than you have hands it's probably not the right thing to do is um, this a bad time to mention we have five in our house that or? is a bad time <laughs> <laughs> Dang, oh, five man. Switch? oh man well but to be um, fair there's four people here so well okay so yeah, but you have I did... you have one for each person and a backup for uh yeah, I got a light as a gift. You know, I have more than Kevin, so the true fan. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you were a bigger fan of Switch Lite, confirmed. There, yeah, congratulations. That, that is a fact. You know, I'm not. I, I'm not gonna grab this dock though, but because uh, my daughter and I already have Stardew Valley, which is you know like Animal Crossing, only fun and good. Oh, so, uh, oh no! <laughs> oh man! Oh wow! Uh, Joke. I, I, okay. Well, I, thanks I for put... listening, everyone. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That was jokes. I just wanted to rattle Serge's cage. <laughs> Serge, you still with us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you thrown anything yet? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what, oh, what's this? I just got an instant message. Shy Guy is never coming on this pod. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> got it. Got it. Uh, uh, yeah. Touche. I don't even know how to transition out of that. So, um, <laughs> Serge, you are definitely getting one of these. Um, I am likely keeping my pre-order and getting one of these so they're nice. they're adorable I, like it's just star so yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. um all right so you know there's been a bit more news out there uh on twitter and such the one thing i do want to touch on um so nintendo got asked by an investor uh the president of nintendo actually um mr furukawa if i'm saying that correctly uh, got asked by an investor, uh, you know, is a new Switch model coming this year? And he said uh, something like, there are no plans for that. Yeah, they lie a lot. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> and Nintendo we, does no wrong. There is no chance no. that he's going to stand up there and say, oh, yeah, there's a new Switch model coming. No, no worries, guys. Um, yeah. So I'm glad yeah. you asked. Let me do an on the spot reveal right now. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. So I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about this. You know, it got a lot of news around. Oh, there's no Switch Pro coming. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah. It may be this year. It may not. But they lie a lot. So this doesn't really prove anything. I mean, to think in this day and age where technology changes so fast that Nintendo is not iterating on a mostly uh, mobile platform. I mean, come on. Obviously, something's in the pipeline. It's just a matter of when it's coming out. Uh, but where it's officially not un- uh, announced, someone mentioned, then they can buy the Animal Crossing Switch guilt-free because that way they don't have to save up for the so-called Switch Pro. <laughs> and if it does come out, it's not your fault you were lied to by the president. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh... You know, I I'm I'm so predicting that the Switch Pro will come out on the same day as Breath of the Wild 2. I I'm guarantee. I mean, cause oh. I'm gonna say 235 percent guaranteed. And if I'm wrong, then I don't know. <laughs> but, it, it was the the president's fault. <laughs> it was the president's fault. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah, <laughs> there bl- you go blame it on the man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, uh, I, I I could see that, and I could definitely see both of those coming this year. I don't think this mm-hmm. changes anything in my prediction of them nope. both coming this year. Uh, you know, they may not, and, and I I you know I'm I'm okay being wrong here, but it's just that's just kind of how it feels with uh, PS5 and. Xbox XXXXX uh, coming out or you know whatever it's called um, <laughs> yeah, whatever the name is 
Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the Xbox 720 spin around in a circle edition. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that Ninten- Nintendo's going to do something. So I am ready for that direct anytime that you guys want to get off Twitter and actually put out a video. That'd be nice. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. I want a direct just so I can stop reading people tweeting about directs. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's never going to... And I mean, there's always gonna be people talking and like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want <laughs> Waluigi on Smash. I, well, that was it's never before. gonna happen. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> but no, oh, we could dream. We could dream. I know. Why would you dream that? <laughs> <laughs> that is an example of the hype of a character getting way beyond the actual value <laughs> of that character. <laughs> oh man, there's even I a like degree. Waluigi, but come on, he is a partner for Wario, and that's pretty much it at this point. So, yeah, I mean, there was even a YouTube video about that, and then I just, man, just the the hype, and yeah. But anyway, oh boy, well. Uh, uh, Gosh, that's that's some pretty good news <laughs> for the switch, the Animal Crossing switch, though. I mean, yeah, 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 it's it's cool to see a new model come out. This is the first one for a while, so yeah, it, yeah. it's cool to see Animal Crossing get some love. I know, I know, you're happy to see that surge, um, and it's oh, yeah. cool to see a new model of switch. So, well, and the quality of it gives me hope if they do another series too. Uh, you know, because the, the Smash Brothers one, they had such a huge opportunity, and it was. The dock bland. was okay, but it's kind of it's kind of lame. So the yeah. the quality of this one gives me hope for future iterations. Yeah, right, yeah, good point. I wish yeah. the Splatoon one had been done up more, but that was kind of early on, so I don't blame them too much mm. for that. But right, I, I didn't like the Splatoon color Joy Cons though. I immediately tried to get it as soon as I could uh, when they talked when they came out. But yeah, um, yeah, I got a set of those because of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to be a stickler on this, but I really hope that they can do something about the Joy-Con drift because that's been an ongoing issue for a long time and for a so lot I gotta of say our... this. Yeah, I, I gotta say this, and I'm gonna be knocking on wood pretty hard here. Uh, my I, the new Joy-Con that I got with the V2 and a new set that I got at the same time have not been drifting at all. Period. Nice. I, and I check them fairly periodically, you know, just to see. Um, mm. I don't have that issue. Uh, you know, it might pop up at some point, but you know, we're going on, uh, you know, quite a few months of having them and really no problem. So maybe the new models, there was something to it. Maybe not. I don't know, but Mm. to anecdotally counter you, I have a gaming club at my school and kids with a lot of newer joy cons. I have repaired 24 joy cons this year alone for drift. So yeah, I, I maybe those kids are a lot harder on them. (laughs) Well, (laughs) If any of you are listening, I love you guys in my club, but at the same time, they're probably a little more harsh on their hardware than we are as, uh, you know, fully developed adults, so that could be part of it too. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 anecdotally, I don't think it's gotten any better, um, but mm. that's just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll see. Hopefully they uh, they do a full revision at some point, but yeah, we'll see. Here's the hoping. Yeah, and just a gentle reminder: uh, if you do have experience Joy-Con drift, uh, call Nintendo. If you live in North America, uh, call eight hundred two five five thirty seven hundred. I do have that, mem- that number memorized for some reason wow. from when I was That's in like impressive. high school. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you call them, they will replace your Joy Cons or repair them for free if they are drifting. So d- definitely give them a call or take them to your uh, your school teacher who might be as nice as Shy and maybe uh, <laughs> he'll fix them for you. So there you go. There you go. I was just say that Nate, the turnaround for that's like a week. I've sent a few of ours in, uh, my daughter's <laughs> and mine. So yeah, like seven days. Uh, you get oh, back nice. pretty quick. Yeah, so. that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So in the meantime, play with a pro controller or if you have another set of Joy-Cons at this point, you know, just pop them on, send those out. No big deal. Uh, mm-hmm. Sergio. Let's talk yes. about our question because this one is going to be interesting. Oh, I'm locked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh so last God. week we asked, what was your biggest gaming letdown of the last decade? And I guess before we really get going ourselves, we have two answers from the Discord. Uh, Cube told us his gaming disappointed of the decade has to be how out of hand and toxic and exploitative monetization had gotten for a while, culminating in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Thankfully, after that, the big companies sobered up a bit, except on phones. Yeah, it's gotten Ooh. better. We went through yeah. some definitely growing pains there, but it's gotten better. Yeah, definitely. And a bit of a hot take from Waluigi3030. He said, biggest disappointment is easy. The Smash Ultimate Fighter Pass. 
Piranha Plant, another a Fire Emblem sortie, definitely missed opportunities. Wow. Yeah, for Waluigi. I mean, that's <laughs> probably... <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah, he I, just I, wants I can... Waluigi in Smash. I've seen my previous it. comment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm with you, Waluigi. I believe in the W. Until the end. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to have Waluigi in Smash, but uh, anyway. Uh, at this point, I just feel like that's... Uh, no, because it just makes that. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yes. People have been clamoring exactly. for it in such an annoying way. It's just going to validate that. Just, just no, Sakurai, no, no. Dude, like at this point, whatever follows Smash Ultimate, so like Smash of the Century or whatever, is going to come out, and he's going to be the first character everybody shows, and everybody will have moved on by that point. And go really? Well, we okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fair point. But, you know, this leaves a chance for, you know, Mia from Golden Sun. No, I'm kidding. But anyway. Yeah, e- <laughs> equally as relevant. Uh, Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize if I'm not pronouncing this correctly. <laughs> as what Shai, would, Shai said before, uh, Ferrari's Dragon. He said that Breath of the Wild was probably my biggest gaming disappointment of the decade. Either that or Pokemon X. Um. And he also Ooh. mentioned that, you know, everything that made the game good that people liked about it, like, took away from what made me like every other Zelda game. The dungeons were boring, which was attributed to them all being the same gold theme, and none could have puzzles unsolvable by the same four tricks, though each did have some extra function. The shrines also had one theme to them, which made me lose interest in finding them. It was all light blue and faint voices. Not like wondering where the next temple theme would be, or would be. The story was really non-existent, and there was no sense that I was an important hero in, the, in this world. I got literally every item I needed in the first 30 minutes. Wow. So there was no feeling of growth. I mean, I could go on, but I don't like crapping on games everybody likes. And I so desperately wanted to love it, which is why it was a personal disappointment. Mm. Ooh, man, that's, that's, that was very heavy. Um, what do you all think about that? I mean, so I, I'm I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, you must I, have missed that pond. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pond. Go back, find that pond. Uh, you know, I I disagree, but not really with the points that they're making. Uh, so the fact that it was a different Zelda game, it didn't have themed dungeons, it didn't have this the classic Zelda, uh, you know, go to dungeon, find new item, and then all of a sudden you have new item that you can then use, you know, going forward. Didn't have that. Um so yeah, it did give you all the tools for the most part that you needed uh on the Great Plateau before you actually get into the game. Uh I get it. I, I completely get it. It's just a different style of game. And it's just a different style of game that, in my opinion, needed to happen for Zelda. Because mm. Zelda after Ocarina of Time had released a bunch of games kind of trying to be Ocarina of Time or be like a weird, uh, you know, sideways view of Ocarina of Time. And that just got kind of old after 15 years of doing that. So um, for this game to come out and be something completely new, completely different, and more focused on the overworld and the actual exploration, uh, in my opinion, not a bad thing. Uh, Also, in my opinion, they have a nice opportunity with Breath of the Wild 2 uh, to really explore this underworld idea and maybe get back into maybe more of a mixture of the two different styles um, and and try to please everyone. (laughs) Spoilers, Mm -hmm. that's not going to happen. So uh, (laughs) the the pleasing everyone part is not going to happen, I'll I'll say. But uh, yeah, that's that's mine. But I don't, uh, like I said, it was a great... I, I I view it as a masterpiece, um, but I totally get what you're saying there. Like I really do. To that end, and I, I'm not a Zelda player, but I just appreciated it was a, a so well supported and thought out response. Right? He wasn't like it was disappointing because I thought it sucked in the end. Like <laughs> yeah, in, in this kind of toxic toxic yeah. internet age, you don't. It's rare to see a nice, calmly well reasoned response. So so well done there. Yeah, almost almost kind of shouting at the waterfall of people who love that game too. So yeah. Uh, and, yeah, <laughs> I don't disagree with what you said. I, like, yeah. I, I, it it hit me differently, but the points that you made, yeah, extremely well said. It, it's great because you know we you know we have a community with people like Ferrari's Dragon who has you know they he has a well thought message. It's it's you know it's 
it's empathetic, it's mature, like it, it, it has a nice art, you know, he made his points and it's, it's a very nice way to put it. And um, we're very lucky to have, you know, people like him and, and other people in our community who are able to, you know, have that sort of, of say in the, in the game. And no matter how you feel about a game, you know, everyone's opinions and, you know, the way they feel about a game is respected and uh, considered. So I just want to point that out, especially for our community. So Yeah. Cool. Nice. So, well, actually, <laughs> my disappointment of the decade, man, honestly, okay, until a few minutes ago, I was going to go with Zelda Skyward Sword. Yes, I was going oh. to. But I thought, you know, I thought I actually beat that game. So there's there's at least that. Is there a game that really disappointed me that I didn't even finish? And there is. And that game is Paper Mario Sticker Star for the 3DS. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good pick. And here's the thing, you know, I when I... When they announced it, oh, you know, Paper Mario coming to the 3DS, I was sold already. I didn't need to look at anything. I didn't even want to. I wanted to go fresh, no spoilers. And <laughs> I got the game and I stuff. kept <laughs> <laughs> I kept playing and I thought, ah, oh, that's funny. I'm not getting experience points here. I'm not getting any partner characters. What's going on? And I kept playing and that stuff never came. And the fun never came. I That game is, ah, oh, I want to say things, but this is a... Uh, <laughs> we have ratings. This is, this we is have... a PG show. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's all good. All right, Kevin, what you got, man? All right, I'm gonna try not to go as long, so I'll keep it short. Watch Dogs was the biggest disappointment I've ever had in a video game ever. Um, you know, oh. they, they hyped it so much at I believe it was E3 or even before. You know, with the yes. way you can you can hack and like just you know just control the whole city with just, you know, a touch of your mobile phone. It was like, wow, so cool. But when you actually got the game, it was none of that. You know, it was just, the story was poorly executed. You know, I didn't really, I didn't really feel the, you know, the energy I got from, you know, Aiden, I think is the, the main character. Yes, like, my homie, Aiden Pierce. Well, you know, he's not my homie, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's cool that he is for you. But for, for me, it's just like he's mon- monotonous. He, I didn't feel you know, engaged in what he was trying to do. And then the best part about the game is the game within the game. There's like this like 3D, like alien invader sort of thing that was actually more fun than actually playing the game. And I spent <laughs> way more time doing that than actually going through the story. Um, there were some <laughs> there were some sort of, you know, ha- not hack and slash, but just hack and, and, you know, just hack your way through the levels. But it just never felt like how it lived to the hype. It just, it did not meet the hype. And it was just totally disappointing. And I I think I sold it, like, as soon as I could. After, I don't know, 15 hours, I'm like, ugh, I'm done. That's my answer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good pick. I like that yeah. one. Gosh. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, and I struggled with this question, because there's, there's actually a few things. Um, I was... I was disappointed by the closing years of the Wii, for example. Um, I was disappointed by the overall reception to the Wii U because I actually, like, we've talked about this. I think that's a great console. I really do. Oh, Uh, it's so good. I really do really like the Wii U. But I think I'm going to go with, in terms of specific games, I'm going to go with games that are missing this decade. Uh, and they're missing Mm. for specific reasons. Uh, The games that come to mind are Advanced Wars, uh, F-Zero, uh, oh, and gosh. and one in yeah. particular, Golden Sun. And so oh, since <laughs> only one of those series had a game release this decade, think about it, that's awful, um, I've got to pin this whole weight on poor Golden Sun Dark Dawn for the DS released in 2010. <laughs> you know, I don't remember that game that much. No, I'm just kidding. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say this, like, I didn't hate that game. Uh, it just was kind of mediocre. And after the utter fantastic games that were Golden Sun uh, 1 and The Lost Age 2, uh, those games were incredible. Told a fantastic story, one of my favorite RPGs ever, uh, for a, a large number of reasons um, that I won't go into here. Dark Dawn just kind of felt like, okay, this is kind of more of that that took the story in a direction that was kind of unlike how the games ended and it should have gone, in my opinion. And that's all I really remember about it. And then that's been the last game in the series because it didn't do all that well. And now Camelot is forced into Mario Sports games, uh, <laughs> twenty twenty, yeah, you know, all all the time, twenty four seven Mario Sports games. Let's go, you know. And that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So 
I think uh, if I'm going to pin it on a single game, sorry, uh, Golden Sun, Dark Dawn. Uh, sorry, Great Matthew. Pick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and just really quick, like, I just didn't like how easy the battles were. Like, you can just go through every battle with using physical attacks. You only have to use your gym. Yeah, and like, the last games were hard. Like, yeah. the, the first two games were actually quite difficult yeah. and required yeah. some strategy and even maybe some grinding here and there and, and such. Not really, but uh, at least a little bit. This one, it, it kind of stacks up to why I don't remember as much. I didn't play it that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good pick. I think, uh, for me, I thought on this question... I don't have a single game, I guess, but for me, it's the fact that here we are in 2020 and still having the conversation of how behind Nintendo is with their online experience. And I just don't feel like there's, they've hardly made any gains in the past decade. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the performance, the, the interface, trying to interact with, with friends, I mean, it's all just so antiquated and it doesn't look to be improving anytime soon. And... I just feel like that's incredibly disappointing. Yeah, mm. I have to agree. I mean, the friend co thing, uh, it's just like, get with the times, man. Like, <laughs> I I don't know. I, there, were, there were actually talks about how um, they were going to get rid of that before, you know, when the Switch was about to come out, but they never did. And... Well, they did. So the Wii U had no friend codes. Right, yep. Oh, they did. Well, no, they you looked up people by their name. So, I mean, they oh. did. And then they brought him back. No big yeah. deal. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is I, like... <laughs> I, you know, I have a contrary opinion there. I really don't care about friend codes because either way, <laughs> it's just something I got to type in to friend somebody. No big deal. Um, I, I don't yeah. care too much about that. Uh, what I do care about is how inconsistent they are with their online offerings as a whole. Um, so it seems like every game that they do has a different... Uh, strategy like arms had a great lobby area uh for online play i love yes, the, the party yep. modes in 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 arms and then smash comes back with this mode that if you try to change your character you've got to go through you know, like it <laughs> kicks you out of the arena and stuff and, like it's just kind of weird that they don't seem to like keep learning from prior yeah. but yeah yeah that's a good point i mean i guess i just thought the the online app like we only use that for splatoon 2 um Personally, for me, I did, and that was it. Like, I think it was a missed opportunity. We could have used that for other games, or just yeah. Uh, and and I remember when we were talking about this, and I was trying my best to defend the, the other side. Like, hey, you know, it's their first foray into this sort of thing. Give them some time. It's been some time already, <laughs> and it's just. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, screw that. The, the, there's this company with all this money, all this knowledge. They have the ability, and they just they just don't advance it exactly, at all. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, how many times could you? We've had the same conversation the past decade, and there's really been no progress. Right. I mean, I'll, even even the performance on on a wired connection. I mean, it's still hit and miss. You'll be on Mario Kart, and people are teleporting around, or. Uh, sometimes Smash will still stutter, and I mean, sometimes that's beyond Nintendo's control. But I just yeah. feel like, the, but I've, yeah. I, I, I get that. I get how it all works. But at the same time, I just feel like things have plateaued. There's been no measurable mm. progress at at all, and it's frustrating. Yeah, they are going to have a struggle making a handheld console because, again, we've talked about McDonald's Wi-Fi before. It's a thing. People get on McDonald's Wi-Fi and play games, and it does not work mm. well. Um, but I've had it not work well with us you yes, know, when we're all wired in. That's and, the problem. Or, or like, I go on my Switch menu. I see these friends. They change their names. I, I don't know who they are if they got a weird nickname now, or I can't say, hey, want to play Smash? I got to go on Discord. And this is simple things. And yeah, they the even fact that we don't have a party system really bugs me. The yeah. fact that you can't like send little pings like, "Hey, I'm playing Smash. Want to join?" or anything like that, uh, even if they're like preset, that actually does yeah. bug me at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's why. Like, I remember Sergio and I we were talking about this uh, a while back about how they could borrow from you know Microsoft and Sony for the way they do their online chats, rooms, and stuff like that. I think it would greatly benefit Nintendo if they were to take a page from their books. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll we'll see how it goes. Nintendo, if you're hearing us. We want you to improve. <laughs> it is a number one ask above you know most things. <laughs> but yes, like we do like the games, but we want a better online. System. Nah, first Pikmin four, then online. There you go. <laughs> That's right, my number four, two ask. And and, and 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 then maybe a new Golden Sun. Okay, so just yeah. <laughs> Figure that out. Oh man. Okay. All right. Nice. What's our question for this week, Serge? 
question for this week. This was picked this morning, unrelated to recent news, I promise. Question, what single feature would you want the most out of a potential Switch Pro? Because it is coming. <laughs> oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let us know uh, if you're in our Discord. That's the best way to let us know and have a conversation. So, yeah, can't wait. Um, otherwise, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, two quick pieces of uh, shout-out. So, one, uh, head over to our blog, nintendojump.blogspot.com, uh, to check out an article that uh, Bexilla actually wrote on Nintendo Gaming for the non-gamer. I thought it was actually mm -hmm. a... A nicely written, different perspective from me, for sure, because I've been playing games my whole life. Um, I, th I, th I thought it was a nice article. Also, uh, while you are uh, looking for things to read, please check out wave2high.com. Uh, Kevin, you are doing a travel blog. It is really cool. You're writing about your trip to Japan, and uh, I think people should check that out. So please check that out. Um, and I think that's probably it for plugs. Sergio, you want to wrap us? Sure, and yeah, that's right. Thank you for listening, everyone. We're going to jump out of here. But you can keep the discussion going by chatting with us on our Discord group. The description for this episode has a link to our Discord if you would like to join. We are also on Twitter and on Instagram as Nintendo Jump, and we also have a Facebook group. Please send us any feedback that you have at nintendojumppodcast at gmail.com. The best way to support this show is through our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash nintendojump, or by leaving a review for the show in your favorite podcast application. We would really appreciate it. This is Sergio, and on behalf of Shai, Daryl, and Kevin, thanks for listening. We hope you have a great week. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, where's that from, Serge? <laughs> Animal Crossing. Okay, there we go. Couldn't have Excellent. picked something for Shovel Knight, could you? No. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I tried. <laughs> I was just like, man, but I really wanted to hum Animal Crossing. You know, every time my daughter hears you do that, she says, what's wrong with him? Is he okay? <laughs> no. The answer is, no. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Just so we, just so we <laughs> represent it. There you go. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.